the people must be told that religion is the devil's substitute, a subtle scheme to deceive and turn them away from God. This knowledge is necessary that they might flee from religion and serve God and Christ the King. اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله The Vatican rules over approximately 2 billion of the world's 6.1 billion people. The colossal wealth of the Vatican includes enormous investments with the Rothschilds in Britain, France and the USA, and with giant oil and weapons corporations like Shell and General Electric. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. Many liberal organizations, including the United Nations, are pursuing the development of a one-world religious organization. First ever Millennium World Peace Summit of religious and spiritual leaders took place at the United Nations in August. And some believe it marked the first major step toward a movement to usher in a global spiritual body that may one day speak for all religions. Robert McGinnis with the Family Research Council says it appears the hidden agenda is to unite people under one religious organization so they will peacefully accept UN goals such as population control, abortion rights, and one world government. Instead of all these different gods, maybe there's one god who manifests himself and revealed himself in different ways to different people. You know, what about that, huh? And founder and billionaire Ted Turner was the honorary chair of the World Religion Summit. Turner, known for his critical views on biblical Christianity, promoted the New Age concept that there are many ways to heaven. The Jews are not innocent, the Christians are not innocent, the Muslims are not innocent. Everybody is fighting everybody. Nobody, everybody has blood on their hands. When does this end? With churches spending millions of dollars for political campaigns, as well as vast and expensive real estate, why should they be exempt from taxes? They should. They shouldn't? Really? Wow. The most infamous being the one between Pope Pius XII and Adolf Hitler. During Pavlovich's four-year reign, he and Roman Catholic prelate Archbishop Alois Stepinac pursued a convert or die policy. We know that Al Qaeda is actively planning to attack us again and that we must use all elements of our power to defeat it. You want to have a conference here of peace? Step back and look and read the facts. Not the facts have been misconstrued by the Zionist propaganda. There's absolutely nothing to stop the Zionist terror, theft, and murder in Palestine, and is every bit 
the warmonger that George Bush ever was. In identifying those responsible behind the September 11 attack, that some segments within the U.S. government orchestrated the attack in order to save the Zionist regime. Some soldiers call them Jesus rifles. Contain a secret coded reference to New Testament passages about Jesus Christ. One religion to spit in the face of someone else's religion. The issue here is not religious freedom. The issue is it's holy, sacred ground. And what's most interesting is how they can't understand that. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. I don't want the mosque here. They're putting a flag on the victory. America wants to conquer your land, conquer your resources, kill your brothers, make your sisters, break their sisters, and drop bombs on your children, and you have nothing to say. God bless America. Thank you, Rowan. You're awesome, please. Gunmen assaulted the Benghazi compound on Tuesday night, initially killing one staff member. They were attacking the building in protest at a film being produced in the US that they deemed blasphemous to the Prophet Muhammad. Crimes against humanity, that's the accusation against the Pope and three Vatican officials in a complaint filed with the Hague's International Criminal Court. Arizona's KOLD has more. The U.S. Human Rights Organization Center for Constitutional Rights submitted the complaint at the Hague today. It accuses the four men not only of failing to prevent abuse and not punishing perpetrators of rape and sexual violence, but also of engaging in the systematic and widespread practice of concealing sexual crimes around the world. That was about Muhammad Adid, a, a Muslim warlord, murdering 22 Pakistani Muslim troops.
And at some fundamental level, religion doesn't allow for compromise. It's the art of the impossible. If God's spoken, then followers are expected to live up to God's edicts, regardless of the consequences. For centuries, Christians have lived peacefully in the Muslim world. In the Islamic holy book, the Quran, both Jesus and Muhammad are prophets. Yet in recent years, minority Christians, mostly in Egypt and Iraq, have come under attack by Muslim extremists. The most recent attack was on New Year's Day 2011 when car bombs went off outside a Coptic Christian church in Alexandria, Egypt, killing 21, injuring nearly 100. Following the attack, Christians in Egypt took to the streets, clashing with police. And even if we did have only Christians in our midst, if we expelled every non-Christian from the United States of America, whose Christianity would we teach in the schools? Would it be James Dobson's or Al Sharpton's? Folks haven't been reading their Bible. And I have faith that millions of believing Americans want that to happen. No matter how religious they may be or may not be, people are tired of seeing faith used as a tool of attack. They, they don't want they don't want faith used to belittle or to divide. Uh, they are tired of people who deliver more screed than sermon. Despite months of discussions, Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti has surprised the Vatican by announcing an end to tax breaks previously enjoyed by the Catholic Church. This move could bring in an estimated 1 billion euros to help with the budget deficit. After telling the European Commission, but not the Church, the decision appeared on the government's website. Italy is a Catholic country. Christians pay taxes, but until now the Church didn't pay. It's fair that the Church pay a contribution for its commercial activities. Since our founding, the United States has been a nation that respects all faiths. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. None. The world must stand together to unequivocally reject these brutal acts. As Americans, let us never, ever, forget that our freedom is only sustained because there are people who are willing to fight for it, to stand up for it, and in some cases, to lay down their lives for it. The walls between races and tribes, natives and immigrants, Christians and Muslims and Jews cannot stand. These now are the walls we must tear down. Some have sought to justify this vicious behavior along with the protest that took place at our embassy in Cairo yesterday as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. But let me be clear, there is no justification for this, none. Violence like this is no way to honor religion or faith. And as long as there are those who would take innocent life in the name of God, the world will never know a true and lasting peace. The world will never know a true and lasting peace. I am an American citizen. When I protested my government's policies, they labeled me a terror suspect, which allowed them to arrest me and to detain me without a trial for as long as they wanted. The National Defense Authorization Act will strip us of our constitutional rights, allowing for the arrest and indefinite detention of U.S. citizens without a trial.
Um, so just to be precise, is it ethnic profiling, religious profiling? Who would be profiled? Well, the folks who are most likely to be committing these crimes, if you look at it, I mean, obviously it was people, uh, obviously Muslims would be, a, would be someone you'd look at, absolutely. People that were walking in the darkness have seen a great light. As for those dwelling in the land of deep shadow, light itself has shone upon them. For there has been a child born to us, there has been a son given to us, and the princely rule will come to be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. To the abundance of the princely rule and to peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom in order to establish it firmly and to sustain it by means of justice and by means of righteousness from now on and to time indefinite. The very zeal of Jehovah of armies will do this.